Hello, my name is Chris Davey and I'm Director of the Australian Institute of Archaeology. Every year we have a visiting speaker to give our annual lecture and this year we are honoured to have Professor William Deaver. Bill, welcome to Australia. Thank you. Pleasure. My first trip. Um, I was wondering if we could start by uh, talking a little bit about your introduction to archaeology, how you got into it and what attracted you. Well, I came to it via biblical theology, which I had done in seminary. My father was a clergyman. I grew up with the Bible. Ernest Wright was a famous biblical theologian in America, at the same time our best-known Palestinian or biblical archaeologist. So after seminary, I went to study with Ernest, and I quickly realized I didn't have that much interest in theology. I had the dogmatic temperament, but no talent. So I was going to drop out, and Ernest said, come with me to Shechem, 1962, and try archaeology. I tried it, I liked it, and uh, I never wavered after that point. So you learnt most of your uh, on-site uh, methodological activities at Shechem? Yes, yeah, Shechem was experimenting with Kenyon, Kathleen Kenyon's uh, stratigraphic methods, mm. self-consciously, and so we were trying to learn how, how to dig. Ernest himself was already ill and was almost never in the field, so essentially we younger people were on our own experimenting, but Kenyon certainly had a great influence on us as far as field method. Mm. And you very soon went on to direct your own excavation yes. at, at Gezer. Gezer was built on Shechem, partly uh, because we had learned ways not to do archaeology. Shechem dig wasn't that tightly organized, and it was a rather old-fashioned dig. So at Gezer, we were pioneering with altogether new methods, so we thought. Mm -hmm. We were the first to start volunteer uh, field schools and to work without hired Arab laborers. Um, we were writing our own excavation manual. We were trying, in fact, to adopt the best of Kenyon's methods with the best of American-style biblical archaeology. Yeah. With re respect to biblical archaeology, they, you very soon started to be critical of its method. I was wondering if you could tell tell us what. Uh, well, I thought led it didn't have much method. <laughs> um, it seemed to me that the agenda of the biblical theology, biblical archaeology movement, was pretty much the same, an attempt to prove the Bible in some sense or another, and that seemed inadequate to me. And it's, it also dawned on me that the theological objectives of biblical archaeology were never met: the historicity of the patriarchs, Moses and monotheism. Uh, the, uh, archaeology never solved those problems. It created new problems. So I was frustrated by what I thought was the failure of the older approach. I was beginning to be influenced by more anthropological models uh, as well as new methods of digging. So I, I guess we thought we were revolutionaries. Yes. So it was driven to a large extent by what in America was called the new archaeology. Uh, very soon it was. First of all, it was just dissatisfaction with certain failures in our own field. But uh, by the late 60s and early 70s, uh, certainly we were heavily influenced by the new archaeology and its more anthropological orientation. Mm -hmm. I wanted to make uh, biblical archaeology a secular, professional, specialized discipline, not a branch of biblical studies. Mm. So while you say that Biblical archaeology failed in its mission to, to prove the Bible. Uh, there are others who um, are sometimes called minimalists who seem to be convinced that archaeology has disproved the Bible. And I suspect you <laughs> consider that equally. The, what we have done is disproven their view of the Bible, which is a pretty uh, nihilistic view. Uh, I've, I've fought rather hard against uh, the, the minimalist because archaeology, archaeologists by temperament and training and experience are positivist. Don't tell me there's no ancient Israel, I handle it every day. So we, we are not happy with the negativism of that school. There is some history in the Hebrew Bible. Archaeology has illuminated that history, but not always in the way we thought that it would. I think personally the results of archaeology have been altogether positive but some will be uncomfortable because we've raised some uncomfortable new questions. Look at the Israelite exodus and conquest in the light of the archaeological data. The old views are very difficult to maintain. But I continue to believe um, that the dialogue between archaeology and biblical studies is fruitful and will be even more fruitful if, if we pursue it more vigorously. Yeah. In 1975, you went as professor of archaeology to the University of Arizona in Tucson. Yes. 
Um, can you tell us about that change and a bit about your students? Well, it wasn't a change that I engineered. It was uh, born of necessity, but once I arrived there, I found the views of my colleagues in the anthropology department who were leaders of the new archaeology movement very congenial, and before very long I opened a doctoral program and began to train students. And it was very deliberate. I had set out a new agenda, how best to achieve that, not just through my own publications, training a new generation. So I think my students thought they were revolutionaries too. Those were heady days. We were doing new things. We were changing the field, and indeed we did change the field. One of the watchwords of my revolution was specialization. My students became very specialized. They know things I don't know. Uh, professionalization, they, they've become professional, they're not amateurs, they don't play at archaeology, it's a career, a vocation for them. Mm. Uh, secularization was another one of my watchwords. Uh, none of them is a biblical archaeologist in the old-fashioned sense, not one, but they're making extremely important contributions to the dialogue between archaeology and biblical studies. Mm. They're, they're, they're different, no two of them are alike, and they don't just follow me. Um, 31 of them I have out there. They're all working, doing wonderful things. I often say what you're doing is absolutely brilliant. Sometimes I don't quite understand what it is. Um, it's their turn, and they're going to be very good. Yes. You've recently uh, written a book which is in press. Uh, of course, you've written many books, but uh, the book that um, uh, is in press uh, is entitled, as I understand it, Reflections on the Death of Biblical Archaeology, which is the title of your lecture that you're right, giving here. Right. I was wondering if you could tell us just briefly about that uh, as our final question. Well, no one doubts that the old-fashioned style of biblical archaeology is dead, but there are things going around calling themselves a biblical archaeology, which is very confusing. Uh, so I wrote the book reflecting on more than 50 years' experience because I've seen it all. I've known everybody in the field. I, I've been through a marvelous time. So I thought I sort of owed it to give some record of how I understand where we were, where we have come, how we got here. Uh, the book is not as, as certain or as optimistic as I thought it would be. Um, everyone knows that revolutions have unintended consequences, and this one has had some too. Um, so the future is very much open. I, I wouldn't make any predictions. This is my own statement, and mostly it's an attempt to explain who we thought we were and why, why we were doing the things we were doing, what made us tick that generation those three or four generations. I hope the book will be useful because the story of any discipline is the story of its practitioners. Mm -hmm. And it's the personal story behind the stories that I try to tell. I tell everybody's story except my own. Yes. Bill, thank you for coming to Australia. It's a pleasure. I hope you enjoy it very I much. Shall. And thank you for this interview. Thanks for inviting me.